Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I will talk about how to program Hexapod Robot. Before you start, you need to know that programming a Hexapod is very difficult. And to program a movable Hexapod, there is not only one way. There are many different solutions to complete the Hexapod. So that everyone can figure out how to program the Hexapod, I will use the easiest way to show you guys. And from there, you will program your own. I will not cover motion simulation for Hexapod with simulation software in this video. I am not a professional programmer, not even a teacher, so it's very difficult to convey to you guys to understand. So, I'll cover it in more detail in another video. Now you need to prepare Arduino IDE software. I using Arduino IDE version 2, 1.0, you can download and install from Arduino homepage. Link below description. After installing the Arduino IDE, you need to install two more libraries specifically for two modules, NRF24L01 and PCA9685. To install the library, click on the Library Manager, enter search terms as Adafuit underscore PWM and RF24, select the latest version and install. Start writing a program. Here I write two parallel programs for the transmitter module and the receiver module. Next, declare the address for module NRF24L01 and module PCA9685. In the address section, you can change it to another code if you have more than one transmitter. CE and CSN pins of RF24 module you can connect to any pin of Arduino, but you should connect them the same to avoid confusion. To use two separate PCA9685 modules, you need to encode them. One module will be left as is and encoded as 0x40. The remaining module at point A0 will be soldered together as shown in the figure, coded as 0x41. Is the declaration of the minimum value and the maximum value of the servo control signal and frequency used to control the servo. Different servos have different max and min values. You need to find out the correct value for each type of servo. Next. This structure is used to store signal information. The elements sent and received are all declared in this structure. To the void setup section, in this part you should do the same as me. Here I write a small program. Check if the hardware connection of the Arduino with the NRF24L01 module is correct. The program has the following contents. Hold the signal away with a value of 0 or 1. The interval between each hold is 1 second. At the board, receiving a signal with a value of 1 led on, a value of 0 led off.
you can see all the connections are correct. The program works fine. Let's start writing the first program for the hexapod. Here is the one-leg connection diagram of the hexapod. The remaining pins have the same connection as shown in the picture. You need to connect the pins in a certain order. This makes it easier to write programs. First program is the program to create the initial angle for the servo of each pin. This helps the installation process and the coding process later. Next is the program to bring the robot foot to the home position. To find the angle of servo, I use geometry method. It makes it easier for you to visualize how to do it than using algebraic methods. When the rotation angle for the servo has been found, and balance the data to suit the hardware, the home program is written similar to the set angle program. I will combine the two programs I just created into a larger program. Combine and control them by remote control. My advice to you here is to divide the program into several corresponding subroutines. With each generated subroutine, test it before combining with the big program. Avoid unnecessary mistakes that cause you to start over. As you can see, the robot's legs move very quickly, creating bad dynamics for the servo. To overcome this situation, you need to learn more about linear interpolation. It helps the servo move more smoothly, avoid bad influences that may damage the servo. Along with that, you should learn more about other motion problems. When incorporating these algorithms into the program, it helps the robot to move smoothly and look more realistic. Next is the program to control the robot to stand up and sit down by finding the relationship between alpha, beta, and gamma angles. Alpha is the given angle. When increasing or decreasing, alpha will give beta and gamma respectively satisfying the given condition. Note here, you can change the value of edge AH accordingly. Avoid generating values beyond the servo limit at each joint. In turn, alpha is the rotation angle of servo 2. Beta is the rotation angle of servo 3. Gamma is the rotation angle of servo 4. Here is the result of my calculation. You don't have to have the same results as me, because it depends on the condition you use to find the relationship between the remaining angles and alpha. Next is the up-down program for the robot. I call alpha X. X runs from 0 to 50 and vice versa. We get the effect of standing up, sitting down. Simple way to check your solution is right or wrong by looking at the point of contact between the robot's feet and the ground. 
If you do it right when the robot goes up or down, the leg of the robot will be fixed at a constant point. The only thing that changes here is the height of the robot's body above the ground. Next, create a motion program for the hexapod to rotate in place is a combination of movement of two groups of legs. I denoted group 1 and group 2 as shown in the image, where delta is the given variable. By finding the relationship between delta, alpha, beta, gamma, when increasing or decreasing delta will give the value of alpha, beta, gamma, respectively. The motion effect of the pins is the same. The difference here is that the execution time of the groups is different. The special thing here, we need to program the robot to lift its legs every time it moves. To do this, you need to change the value of alpha at the exact moment the robot's legs need to be lifted, similar to how alpha changes in the up-down program. To reverse the rotation of the robot, we just need to change the rotation direction of delta. Create the effect of moving forward and backward for the robot. This program will be more difficult than the previous ones, but they still have the same method of operation. You still use the way to find out the relationship of delta as above. The difference here is that the rotation of the delta is the same across the groups. Look closely at the picture. As you can see, using this program, it is possible to control multiple pins at the same time, performing the same actions. But it is difficult to control the action of an individual leg and add conditions. So I came up with a new program to help fix this, by writing a control program for each pin separately. At different motion effects, I just need to add conditions and change the value of the control variable appropriately and complete a program for a moving effect in a simple yet very effective way. You can control the robot in any way you desire. And it is also the way that I used to program the hexapod without using any other supporting software, with just drawings. Simple thoughts to solve geometry problems of high school students. Sorry, because I can't reveal all the programs to you. The projects I'm working on don't allow this, but I hope you can imagine how I did it. And from there can build a robot hexapod. I wish you success in your project. Now thanks for watching, and see you again.